Next on the news, next on the news concerning clubs, we have very interesting information and very vital information for myself because I have been looking for an excuse, excuse to go to this location for a very, very long time and this just might be it because I'm not, you know, contrary to popular demand or popular to contrary um, assertion, you know, concerning myself and what I look like and stuff. I'm not the biggest weed smoker in the world. That's not really something that I've ever really got down with. I think because I spent so many years in the church, like mostly I'd say maybe plus 20 years in the church in some aspect, growing up in the church, going to it when I was, you know, voluntarily when I was in my teenage years and early 20s. It kind of made me miss a lot of things, especially when it comes to, you know, extracurricular stuff, when it comes to like smoking and taking drugs and stuff. I started all that stuff really late. But in general, even when I was allowed to kind of do my own thing, I never really gravitate to smoking, thankfully, because I have a very addictive personality. So I can only imagine if I really did get into smoking, how detrimental it would have been to my health, especially when it comes to, I've always had these respiratory issues in terms of nasal polyps. I've always had um, some level of asthma growing up as well. So if I did end up smoking on top of that and playing sports and skateboarding and doing the drugs that I do and all that stuff, it would probably wouldn't have ended well for me. So I'm glad I didn't get into smoking. So because of that, I've never visited Amsterdam. I've never been curious to go because effectively I'm not going to go out there and hook up with a hooker because that's not something I'm interested in either. And I'm not really interested in smoking. I would imagine the main part of going to those kind of places, if you're not in love with the city itself, would be to see the red light district or to go and indulge yourself in the weed culture over there because it's absolutely on another level. Maybe it's the closest thing that we have to kind of visiting a place like LA if you're an, Amer if you're an American. But... um Another part of me that wanted to go to Amsterdam a lot was the fact that their club scene there, right? They've got great festivals there. They've got great clubs there, especially on the outskirts of Berlin. So especially on the outskirts of Amsterdam and just outside of Amsterdam. And one of the nightclubs that I really wanted to kind of check out at the time it launched and opened was this venue called The School. It's an incredible, incredible, incredible space out there in Amsterdam, right? Hopefully someone's got an actual... Hold on. Hopefully someone's got a video of what it looks like on the inside. But I liked how it actually was set up on the inside. It was kind of an open space with like boxes that people kind of stood on. Oh, look, this is my video about it being closed. But um, has someone got, yeah, someone's got a video of it on the inside. There's a video here from the outside that people are, I guess, eating and stuff because it looks like a, it's got a restaurant cafe as well on the outside. You know, standard affair. Let's see this video of courtesy of an account called Local Traveller. Showing us a video of it. Let's lower the sound a little bit here. Skip through. Okay, let's mute the sound completely. But yeah, do you see basically how it's kind of laid out? right um let's pause this but yeah it's kind of it, it kind of just looks really interesting because it's it's basically made in a former school so you've got these really amazing big open windows ceiling to floor basically um like all the loads of light coming in loads of interesting spaces because effectively they're all classrooms so they're all going to be kind of square or rectangle kind of base the acoustics are going to be brilliant too because it's a school uh, school acoustics are always great i remember school discos being some of the best highlights of my life when i went to school back in the day which kind of makes a lot of sense and yeah it just looks like a really interesting venue regardless right let's see another video of it on the inside if we can see here Blah, blah, blah. Where is it here? The school Amsterdam. No, no more videos of it on the inside. Huh. Anyway, regardless. Um, cool venue. Really wanted to go to it and check it out. But of course, um, as I reported in my video that you saw there prior, they got into a bit of controversy where essentially they were accused of discrimination and not exactly welcoming in people that were non-white in that kind of space. And of course, there were some issues there concerning bouncers and females and stuff and just the general stuff you hear going on with nightclubs. But I think because it was an accumulation of things going on at the same time, it kind of really blew up and became a big issue because they were basically marketing it as a place that kind of welcomed people from all different backgrounds, all different you know um sexual preferences and whatnot but essentially what was actually happening there on a day-to-day -day basis was completely contrary to what they were talking about and throughout all the backlash that they were getting online and i think a lot of the owners as well and the founders of the space people that were in charge didn't really deal with it the best at the time i feel like a lot of it was maybe blown out of proportion but they definitely added fuel to the fire because they were very dismissive of people's concerns they didn't really try to listen to a lot of people's concerns and they kind of treated people with a lot of um, contempt i felt like when they were talking about the issues going on in there 
which again if you're going through a public cancellation one thing you can't do if you're going to respond is treat people with contempt mostly if you're going to respond to those kind of allegations you should maybe you should probably not respond if you're going to be honest right and just kind of try and do the work and correct the issues going forward and maybe make a statement but if you're going to respond on a case-by-case -case basis or you're going to do what they did and i think that they had like a public town square sort of thing um and they didn't really listen to the concerns they didn't really feel like they were really taking it seriously um it felt very combative that's what you don't want to do you want to very you want to very much so allow the people who are complaining and give them a platform to speak acknowledge what they're saying let them be heard and actually try and sound at least sympathetic to their positions and where they're at and trying to outline what you're trying to do to kind of fix it but it didn't and effectively it got to a point where they couldn't rely on they weren't really sure if that reputation was going to harm them going forward so they kind of you know um by they kind of panicked and basically pulled the cord and closed but if i'm not mistaken they might have pulled the cord just before the pandemic happened so even at the time it looked a bit hasty and it also looked like they weren't really trying to fix the issue we're just going to close and shut up shop that wasn't what people were basically complaining about but they did it anyway it kind of maybe was a good thing going forward because effectively the people in charge weren't necessarily clicking with the local community anyway so long story short they're now going to reopen it looks like courtesy of news verse courtesy of ra it says amsem club the school is going to reopen in september um it says um, yeah, it's, it's going to be open in September for the first time since March 2020. On September the 9th, the school will begin its final 16-month run before closing again in 2024. And it was always meant to be a temporary space. I don't think it was always meant to be permanent. The location is prime, um, you know, so obviously they're going to redevelop it into different things. But it's still a unique enough club, I think, to go to just to visit for once. And again, Amsterdam only being half an hour away from me on the train or whatever it may be, is something that I'm definitely going to go and try and visit. Um, no, the half now maybe on a plane so it's definitely a place i want to try to visit now because it gives me an excuse to go because i don't need to worry about having to go there to just you know smoke and go and see hookers i can actually go and enjoy the clubbing scene and i'm no i'm being facetious i know amsterdam has more to it than just clubbing and uh, sorry and it has more to it than just red light district and smoking but someone like myself who kind of tends to go to a lot of these places in europe off the back of techno tourism it's quite nice to know that there are some clubs that i can go to and attend and have a good time in um as well off the back of it but it continues in the article on september 9th the school will begin its final 16 month run before closing again in 2024 in addition to renovations and changes in the layout the club has overall this vision um, um its team and internal structure implementing new policies such as the code of conduct house rules and awareness team the club's new director of operations erdal kieran who joined in july 2021 spearheaded the changes i like what i'm hearing there i like that they kind of addressed the issues they took took it seriously because if you know there are many other clubs that would have seen what happened to them or there's many other clubs that would have been in their position they would have got all that criticism they would have closed down reopened and just hoped everyone forgot about it and just continued as, as per normal but the fact that they're taking it seriously shows that they want to make the best of the last few months they have available or the last year they have available of running the club or year year less than a year or even more than a year sorry and they want to take it seriously going forward and they also want to include the local community in that as well so you can't hate this you know what i mean they're actually trying to implement changes they're actually trying to change things going forward they've got house rules code of conduct awareness team a new head of operations so hopefully going forward everything should be sorted and again maybe the security guys as well maybe kind of you know slow their roll a little bit as well because i heard some mad stories about the security but it continues the reason for the overhaul dates back to summer 2020 when the school announced its closure amid a backdrop of controversy. Though the reason given at the time was financial, the club had been widely criticised by members of the community for a lack of diversity in its staff and programming, as well as discriminatory instances um, involving security. I find it funny that Ari are reporting on these kind of things because some people would accuse Ari of the same, but we move! There was a huge need for a big dip um, to uncover the problems. Um, sorry, to dig deep and cover the problems, to create structure for having painful but healing conversations and for creating an environment that of trust for our employees, visitors and artists, everyone else that is part of the space, said Kieran. That's a very crucial part of places. That's a very good indicator of a city that takes clubbing and nightlife seriously to the point where they're, they're willing to close down the space and kind of reset it 
and get it back going again. Not to how you see other businesses where they say, under new management, they just change the fucking paint color or they change the fucking menu a little bit. These people are actually going at the root cause. They're doing a root and stem analysis and trying to basically build this club up again from the ground up and hopefully have it connect with the local community. This is something you have to get behind. It continues. The restructuring process took the, the form of more than 500 hours of conversation with more than 100 people from the community, including dancer staff, former members and artists, former staff and artists many people were spoken to more than once the whole cataloging of a number of hours and time you've done things is a little bit weird and a little bit peculiar it's kind of like because you spent money on something it means it's going to be good it's going to be well done it's weird so kind of spend oh, i spent so much time in studio it's going to be great it's not really true it kind of sounds like they're kind of pat, trying to pat themselves on the back but i get it it continues, we often started with a rightful anger towards us, sometimes ended in mutual respect and healing, says Kieran, a humbling process that taught us a lot. We don't think of that as a finished process at all. We are open to keep having these conversations. During the process, we started to feel that there, are, there could be a new start for the club and they could add value to Amsterdam's nightlife. Personally, for me, there comes a point where talking has to stop. I know it's ironic for me because I ramble into a microphone to myself for the best part of a couple of hours every other day. But there comes a time in these kind of issues where actions speak louder than words. I know for myself, from being at the clubbing scene here in the UK and London, we have many issues here concerning discrimination, especially in the centre of London or the east central bit of London from Brick Lane and kind of surrounding places and stuff where a lot of my brother's friends who are kind of like under the age of 26, when they go out in groups of 10 to nightclubs, they're not allowed in in groups of 10 as black boys because they're black. But groups of 10 white boys are going there and they're allowed in. The same goes for black girls. And it's a real big problem, right? They don't really, I don't know why, they think black people are going to be more disruptive in clubs and white people, it's really bizarre. And those are issues that need to be addressed by the nightclubs. And I feel like a lot of those clubs will come out when they get cancelled or when someone records an instances or when they get discriminated at a club or someone posts a viral thread on Twitter or something, they'll get embarrassed and they'll make a big statement about it on Instagram or whatnot, but they won't actually put anything into action. There won't actually be no long-lasting change. And that, me personally, I would much rather those glitzy nightclubs or those places even like the school that have issues with discrimination and maybe not you know representation and stuff apart from putting out statements and committing to things just show and prove it by works and deeds i actually have have a lineup and a flyer out there and i can be able to tell oh wow you've got different faces on there it's not the same old people that play at awakenings oh wow you've got different people working here it's not the same old white faces i see in all different venues like mix it up but actually showing me with actual works and deeds as opposed to statements and whatever that's what i want to see at the end of the day conversations are a good place to start it doesn't get in you somewhere but in the end conversations can get a bit tiring it can get a bit cumbersome and it can get a bit long so i'd like to hear them actually go ahead and do things it continues part of the restructure is a new creative team which will manage the programming according to kieran the three-dimensional focus will be art education as much as music with daytime events workshops and other educational projects planned during the day which i love i'm definitely going to be up for checking that out the school's restaurant and cafe which were which were never closed will continue to operate as usual the club will publish its code of conduct house rules and reflections on the past two um years uh, on its websites next week programming um info will follow in the coming weeks so this is the website. Hopefully we're going to get more information regarding this very, very soon. I can't wait for it going forward. It's going to be amazing to see that going forward, all the new information they're going to be putting out regarding um, the long finale that they're going to be having together. And I'm really, really looking forward to it. I really am because it gives me an excuse to go to a nightclub that I've always been curious to check out with my own eyes. I have always been curious to check out with my own eyes. <laughs> 